Hi, this is Russ McClay, and this uh, is a demonstration of how I create word clouds. Word clouds are uh, a gr graphic images which uh, do a calculation on the repetition of, of the words uh, based on a given text so that the words which are repeated the most appear larger in font size and those uh, less repetitious or smaller and generally the program also um, has an internal list of, of common words that aren't included in the calculation like a and the and, and, and so forth. Um, the, the way I do word clouds is I use uh, the code, the Java code from uh, the guy who made the wordle.net site. So wordle W-O-R-D-L-E dot N-E-T uh, is where you can go and create word clouds uh, using um, a number of fonts and colors and all kinds of custom settings. And it's probably for most people all you need. But I like a little bit finer control. I like controlling and using fonts that I want to use that are not at world.net. I like uh, more precisely controlling the colors and um, I also like outputting to extremely high resolution vector graphics. So uh, what I, several years ago and I actually I was involved with the fellow who was working on world.net and helped with some suggestions I think we improved uh, the, the print output. So what I'm going to show here is um, the process that I use to generate a word cloud. The first thing is that uh, as uh, opposed to the website, what I use is the, the Java code. So basically I use a, a, uh, a command line approach to generating word clouds. And I must admit that this video will probably only appeal to <laughs> very <laughs> somewhat geeky people, but I thought I'd do it anyway. Uh, just maybe it'll help somebody to see see this. So what we have here, first of all, is we have this uh, this text editor here open, and we see this run dot bat. And what this is is this is the script that I run in a DOS window. A DOS window looks like this. This is typical DOS window. You can get to this in Windows by typing CMD in the command line but this is this is DOS so here what we have is I wrote this script that will generate 11 iterations of a particular word cloud I do this because I want to I generate several until I find one where I like the arrangement because the output from from uh, IBM word cloud is random uh, with regard to the arrangement, not with regard to the size of the words, but with the way they are arranged and the way they are colored. You can't control that. You can control the colors, you can control a lot of things about the uh, dimensions, like if you want it more horizontal, if you want it more vertical uh, with regard to the cloud, but there are certain aspects that are truly randomly generated. So I do, I wrote this uh, very simple DOS batch script that does that. And th the important line is here, which is just says that, you know, use this j the Java program to run this Java code and use this configuration file. And the width is 4 by 3, so you have a basic square. And what is the input text that we're going to use? And for the output, we don't want an image, we want to print it and then it will be sent to our uh, a selection of print devices and of course I choose PDF output which will then pr create a vector graphic PDF graphic and this is a loop so it just keeps going round and round and round okay so that's the first part the second part is the configuration file this is uh, just a text file and here we define the kind of fonts we want to use. So here you can see I'm using for the for this uh, word cloud I'm going to do right now tonight. I'm using Humanist. 
which is a great font. Uh, the pound sign in front of a line means that it, it is a comment, uh, treated as a comment, which means the program won't read those. So if I want to use this font, I remove it. If I want to use the one below it, I need to add the pound sign in front of this line and remove it from that line. So you can you know, create a little library of fonts. And as we go down here, there are other settings. I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, just the stuff I'm using, most of the stuff I'm using, the important stuff. <laughs> and here is an important part. Here we are defining what is the background and foreground colors. In this particular cloud that I'm going to generate now, um, I'm using white. Now these color values are hex values and there are all kinds of, uh, you know, online tools that uh, can produce th these codes. Um, it's not very difficult to do so. Uh, they're basically six uh, letters and to define that. So again, it's the same thing as the fonts. You have a pound sign in front of commented lines that you don't want to use and you have you take it out for one you want so in this case I want to use a white background and you can add as many as you want here and again uh, you can get these values from uh, their tools on the net that can produce these numbers it'll give you like a map of colors you click on it and it'll say okay you want dark red here's the number for that now the next part is the palette that we're going to use the palette as you can see over here in this uh, word cloud window here, you can see the palette consists of you know, four or five colors. And that's where you can define them here. In this particular image, we're using uh, this palette. And you'll see some numbers are repeated, like I have here, th which is black. And I have it twice. That means it'll use it twice as much. So if there's a color that you want to uh, uh, randomly appear a little bit more you can double it up triple it up whatever so this this is our basic palette of colors that we're going to use uh, okay so let's continue on here um, these are just various palettes that I use in this particular configuration file and here we have some other things we can set we can set the placement and we can see that I've uh, uncommon at this first one here which is horizontal center line but there are other arrangements that you can use um, here we have the shape blobby or squarish you know for the shape of the cloud uh, we have uh, orientation strategies uh, and here we have stop words and what this is is you can create another text file that can contain words that you do not want included uh, in the word cloud. Uh, for example, I recently did a, a word cloud uh, that was in Spanish for a friend, and so I created a stop words of all the very common words that you find in Spanish, like la and la and k and c and many others, and that way they don't get uh, calculated. And you don't want them to be calculated because they're so common, they would be the giant words in the word cloud, which would kind of ruin the word cloud. Um, and that's about it. So we have this configuration file and we have our batch file. So how do we do this? Well, as I mentioned before, we use a command line prompt. So now I'm going to run that batch file and uh, with the the name of the text file after the batch. So it's going to run against this file of text, which happens to be the Ranch Book uh, paper number two. So now I'm running it, and the script runs, and it's going to run in a loop. And we see here that I've set my default printer to a PDF creator. And that's great. So I just click OK. And you will see here in this window that it just changed. Okay, and we can, they come up upside down. I'm not sure why, but that's just the way it is. And so there we see a word cloud that I've just created. And I say, well, I'd say, well, that, that's pretty good. You know, that's not bad. I might use that one. 
So what I do is I go up here and I look at, because I've set up a serial number system, I see, well, that's going to be, uh, let me just stretch this out a little bit more for the number. Okay, it's 1330. So I make a little note of that. I say 1330 is pretty interesting. Prob I might use that one. And then we just do it again. We just say, because this is that batch script is a loop, we just go, yep. Let's see what's going to happen here. Bang, okay, well that's kind of, eh, not that interesting. So I'll just do another one. Okay, again, not so interesting. That first one may be the one we want. That's an interesting one. I like God here is kind of in the center, Father Divine. This, these are, that's good. But not really catching my eye yet. That first one has caught my eye the most so far. I like this. I mean, it's a good one. They're all good. I mean, I'm basically showing the creative process of how I do these things. There's another one I'd, pro I'd reject that. That's a little bit interesting because it's it's got kind of a you know a ladder thing going on, but I, I'd still say it's not really what I'm looking for. Nope. You just keep going. You know, sometimes I got on the first one. This time, I think. Nope. Well, that's interesting too, but nope. And that's also interesting. I want more red. <laughs> Now my my batch file has run through the the eleven iterations. That's what I set it for because after a while, this output uh, I, I, it has a limit. It's like fifteen or something. So what I'll do is I just kill this, which shuts all those windows I generated, and then we just run it again and see what happens. Here we go. So that's another round. Okay, that's a very interesting one. I like that shape. It's good. It's not bad, but not what I'm looking for. Well, that's interesting. Interesting. I think I want that red god. I, I'd like a maroon god is what I'd like. I think that very first one we got it. We just keep trying. There we go. Now we're talking about something that's interesting to me. Okay. Well, that's sort of interesting, and I'm going to mark down the number. That's 1344. You can see I'm looking at the uh, the file name up here because I'm I've got a string here that picks up the date, and then it just uh, has an incremental number there, so I can keep track of these things. So that's it. There you go. That's um, I've achieved my mission. I have shown how I create word clouds. And uh, this might be interesting for somebody. For me, I get tremendous enjoyment out of it. I mean, as I've shown you, there are so many things you can do to customize these things. I mean, you can pick your fonts, your colors, you know, the background, the foregrounds. You can pick palettes that, you know, are interesting to you. Uh, there's arrangements that you can do in this particular uh, set that I'm doing here. I, I like this um, somewhat uh, portrait mode. It's basically a vertical arrangement, but you can do, you know, you can do anything. You can go horizontal. Uh, I do love word clouds, and this is a hell of a lot of fun for me when I uh, get down to doing some. So that's it. Um, and it was fun doing this.